Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Turn on your outboard motor. Get moving. Join together in the opening prayer, uh, which you see on the screen. And if you want to look in the book, page 357. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right, 
and by your merciful guiding may do them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets. I have killed them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings, the word of the Lord. Uh, today's psalm is number 50. We'll read alternate verses. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will bear witness against you, for I am God, your God. I do not I will not take bull calf from your stalls, nor he goats out of your pens. I know every bird in the sky, and the creatures of the fields are in my sight. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls? or drink the blood of goats. Offer the God's sacrifice of men's and make of your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall honor me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be, for without end. The second reading is from Romans. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be their heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the fate of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written. I've made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did, he did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old. Or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb, no distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong in his faith 
as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. Word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And Jesus said to him, Follow me. And Matthew got up and followed him. And as Jesus sat at dinner in the house, Many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. Now when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when Jesus heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, only those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. And Jesus got up, and followed him with his disciples. And then suddenly a woman who'd been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak, for she said to herself, if only I touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned, and seeing her he said, take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly, the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in. He took her by the hand, and the girl got up, and the report of this spread throughout that district. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Let me say something that I'm fairly certain someone here will object to. Church people can be weird. If the rector, be it Father Dan over 20 years ago, or Father John 15 years ago, or Father Orlando, Ten years ago, and Father Rob in the last year or so, or and especially Father Bill at any time in that period, dare to say something in the celebration of the Eucharist, or say something in the homily which goes in a different direction from that to which they are accustomed, oh how upset they get. Now, this is not something <clears throat> that is peculiar to folk who attend or have attended holy faith in the 21st century of the Christian era. Our readings from the scriptures this morning, both Hebrew and Greek, remind us that this is by no means a new phenomenon, provided the celebrant does things in the way that they ought to be done, and the preacher says only those things that he or she ought to say, then everything is fine and in order, and life can go on like life should go on, and we can leave church certain that we are right. We can go on living our lives in the way we always have, regardless of the fact that it is my way, which might not necessarily be the Lord's way. Oh, have you heard those conversations and comments in the car park after the service? And even on occasion, before someone has even left the building. There was one Sunday, not too long ago, when I was sitting there in my usual seat in the back corner next to that young, beautiful wife of mine. The service was over, and I heard some communicants. I'd seen them go up to receive the body and blood of Christ. So I knew they were communicants. And they were venting in no uncertain terms over what one of the other communicants had done. 
And that, let me remind you, just after we had all sung, Go now in peace, in faith, and in love. In love. And I thought, well, if that is the way they love themselves, since as good church-going folk, church folk they, they surely do what Jesus tells us to do in the second of the great commandments, then perhaps they do not love themselves very much. And yet, oh, they so obviously did. You see, it's not just a matter of being seen as showing up for worship, no matter how many times a week we might do so. And it's just not a matter of using the right words or the right music for the hymns, and I get criticized for choosing the wrong hymns and the wrong music, no matter how well we might say them or how well we might sing them, or the organist might play them, if there is no love in our hearts, no readiness on our parts to see life from someone else's viewpoint, we might as well not have come to church at all. And none of this is new. It's the way church-going folk have always been. And going back earlier, it is how synagogue people have always been. And going back even further, well, you know what I mean. Just look at some of our readings this morning. Take that passage from Hosea. Uh, if you like, you can look it up right now in the leaflet for this morning if you want to just to make sure that I, I'm not misquoting. Hosea lived in the 8th century before Christ. That is 2,700 and some odd years ago. Hosea is speaking or writing as a prophet of the Lord. That is, he is penning the words of the Lord that the Lord would have his people heed. It doesn't matter if they were the northern kingdom of Ephraim or the southern kingdom of Judah. The prophet reminds them of the economic and environmental mess they were all in and of their need to return to the ways of the Lord. And in doing so, Hosea would appear to be referring to an event that was long in the future from his point of view, a kind of forecast of what it would really take to get things back on track to the events of the first Good Friday and of Easter Day. The people felt that the Lord had deserted them, no matter that they were doing all the right things, or what they thought were the right things. If we follow the book, in our case, of course, the, the book of common prayer, no matter whether we prefer right one or right two, if we stick carefully to what is in the book, then everything will be all right. But clearly, it is not all turned out right. Those worshippers in Old Testament times experienced much of what we experience today. Insecurity everywhere, be it in the economy, the environment, national security, or in the local community where we seem to be living in an increasing and ever-increasing crime wave. Like good folk, we all go to church, uh, but it is my church, because that's the real church, or so we like to think. But how does the Lord see it? The way the prophet puts it is this. He has the Lord say, what shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? And then he adds, your love 
is a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. And that, my sisters and brothers, is where the problems arise. So-called goodly, godly people, of whatever faith and denomination, may all, way, all attend their, their place of worship and get the ritual just right. But is that what the Lord requires of us? Look at that last verse of the reading from Hosea. I desire steadfast love, not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. That's the way the Lord spoke through his prophet Hosea all those millennia and centuries ago. We might put it like this in our day. It's not right one or right two that matters. What matters is God-like love. It's not candles and bells and vestments. Those don't count. What does count is knowing what God requires of us. Well, that's my attempt to put it briefly in modernish English. But the wording that matters is the Hebrew of Hosea's time. And Hosea used a term for which we have no one word in English to express, to express it. The word is chesed. And in Hosea's time, it was used to express something like mercy, loving kindness unself-interested action on behalf of someone less fortunate, somebody less blessed than I am, and who might not be able to reciprocate because the loving deed has been done anonymously. And that's a lot to heap upon three Hebrew consonants. But what I particularly like about the Hebrew word hesed is its initial letter, which in Hebrew looks like a wide open doorway. The psalm appointed for today picks up on that very idea. In the selected verses we have just read from Psalm 50, the psalmist quotes God. He, he has God say, I will bear witness against you. For I am God, your God. And then God does not accuse them of not going to public worship, uh, as so many churchgoers, churchgoers have accused non-churchgoers. It's not what went on in temple worship that lacked anything, except that God didn't need it. But what God did need is right there in verses 14 and 15 in the psalm. God is asking us to offer thanks for all that we have received from him, to keep the promises and pledges we have made to him, and to pray to him for help, rather than assume or presume that we can work it all out by ourselves. In other words, for heaven's sake, let God do what only God can do best. We have to have hearts and minds that are wide open doorway to God and his love so that his love can work for us, that his love can work on us, and his love can work through us. And not just in the temple, on a Saturday, as in the psalmist's day, or in the parish church on a Sunday, as in our day, but in all places, at all times, every day, every hour, every minute, every second. 
And then there is a story that we read in the Gospel just now. And you can look at that passage and see how much Jesus crammed into a couple of hours on one day. And it wasn't a Hebrew Saturday, and it wasn't a Christian Sunday. It was just an ordinary day. A couple of hours at the end of an ordinary day. Jesus has met a probably rather crooked tax collector, and the tax collector has invited him to to go along with him, and no, Jesus invites the tax collector to go along with him, and the tax collector does. And then the tax collector has Jesus over for an, e an early evening meal, and the tax collector has his friends and his co-workers share in the repast, and that upsets the local pious scripture teachers. That is when Jesus makes that oh so wise but startling comparison only the sick need a doctor if you think you are a-okay then you don't think you need Jesus but then a leading member of the local congregation the congregation that has just been criticizing Jesus realizes that he is not A-OK -okay, and that he does indeed need a Jesus. His daughter has just died. And so he reaches out to Jesus for help. And he doesn't have to wait to go to a place of public worship on, on the holy day of the week. He goes to where Jesus is, where Jesus always is among those whom the pious call sinners. And Jesus gets up from the meal and he goes with him. But on the way, a very, very sick woman, she's been sick for years, forces her presence upon his attention. And she finds herself healed. Well, you've heard this story already this morning, but I hope your mind was on what you were listening to. Jesus reassures the woman of her place in God's world, no matter how sick she is, and then he continues his walk with the mourning father. And as we heard, the daughter is restored in good physical health she is restored to her father despite what everybody present believed had happened in a few short verses the, the evangelist tells the story how jesus on an ordinary weekday evening opened his heart like the open doorway initial of hesed and we saw how much real goodness flowed into the world of those who knew that they needed help. And incidentally, into the world of those who did not believe that they needed help because they already knew what they knew, even though they were wrong. We in the West, we who look back with a certain amount of pride to the glories of ancient Rome and even more ancient Athens, the Latin and Greek cultures that have shaped Western thought and culture, we do not realize what a disadvantage that is. We think with our brains, 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 rather like that artificial brain that we have created, the computer. But in by far the greater part of the world, including ancient and modern Palestine, the ancient Ephraim and Judah of Hosea's day, people think, people believe, people know that the seat of the mind is not in the head. It is in the heart. And when we are 
being really honest, even we sophisticates of Western culture, if we're being really honest, we know that the primitives have got it right. We know, we too know, that a truly human being is not located up here, but here. Not in our heads, but in our hearts. And we too, when we forget to be sophisticated, rather like using computer-like brains, when we forget to be sophisticated and believe and think with our hearts, then that computer-like brain loses its bossy importance. We are no longer creatures, I am, I'm tempted to say victims, we're no longer creatures and victims of time and space. We've got to get this done by this time in this place. We have to be out by quarter to ten because we can't go more than 45 minutes of worship. Uh, you've got another seven. We don't let time and space boss us around and tell us what to do. We become the people of God. No longer creatures confined by what we set up. We become people who think at all times with our hearts. Those people who are filled with Hesed, the Hesed of which Hosea wrote. People whose hearts are an open doorway at all times, open to receive the love of God and to share it with all and any of those who need to know the love of God. And so we become people like Jesus. Not ashamed to spend time with sinners like the tax collector and his colleagues. Not ashamed to be with mourners like that bereaved father. Not ashamed to be with a woman who has survived a long illness and the completely ineffective cures offered by doctors who use their brains instead of their hearts. People who do not really know what they claim to know. We're no longer people <laughs> limited by time and space. Not the 45 minutes we spend in this small space on a Sunday. But we step out of those brain-inspired, self-imposed dimensions into the heart-inspired eternity which into which God has been encouraging men and women, or rather women and men, to enter from Genesis 1 onwards. And you know what that means? It means thoughtlessly and joyfully loving our neighbors as we would be loved. Amen. <coughs> when you're ready, is no hurry, we're living in eternity. Join with me in affirming our faith in this God of the open heart. We believe in one God, 
the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, through God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Prayers of the people are guided by Form 2. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for Bishop Justin, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially for, for those who have died. I ask your prayers for the sick, especially Aldit, Althea, Blossom, Bonnie, Caitlin, Calope, Carol, Caroline, Cleon, Debbie, Dwayne, Dido, Dennis, Donald, Desiree, Earl, Idris, Erica, Fiona, Francia, Gail, Jeanette, Gloria, Gus, Handel, Hazel, Howard, Iona, Jason, Jean, Jessica, Jim, Joey, John, Kate, Leandus, Lisa, Lena, Leonard, Leroy, Lloyd, Lorraine, Madison, Martha, Marlene, Megan, Melrose, Obi, Patricia, Paula, Pauline, Priscilla, Randolph, Richard, Ronald, Rose, Roy, Ruby, Sean, Sean, Stafford, Susan, Tamar, Terry, Theresa, Trevor, Toppin family, Tyler, Verona, Vivia, Wayne Jr., Yvonne and Zelma. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty and eternal God, 
rule of all things in heaven and in earth. Mercifully, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are laden down and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And John said, if we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins. So, let us confess our sins, our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are sorry. And we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God has mercy upon you. He forgives you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. And he's strengthening you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit he keeps you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be with you. Peace 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 be Good to see you again. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace be with you. While we have time, and we're running late, 
while we have time, let us do good unto everyone, especially unto those of the household of faith, particularly those of the household of holy, holy faith. Everything comes from you, O Lord.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and you called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. visiting, or if you're not an Episcopalian or an Anglican, if you've been baptized, you're welcome at the table. It is not mine, it's not ours, it is the Lord's table. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be, incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Saviour and the Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, you have made us worthy to stand before you, In him you brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. And on the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, because this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. 
Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, we pray that you will put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, holy faith, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. My sisters and my brothers, behold the gifts of God for the daughters and sons of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Peace of the Lord be always with you. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Body of Christ, the bread of heaven, given to you and for your bride. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Again, the body of Christ, the bread. Okay. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Last but not least, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Will you lead us back to this afterwards? Don't, don't, don't tell me, go in front of us when we come back. Yes. Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keeps your heart and mind and knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit is upon you and will remain with you for time and for eternity. Do we have some faces here which are old to them but new to us? Uh, sitting in the back row, we welcome Lenny Mulling. Thank you. They are of good stock. They're Mullings. Right, Victor? Um, after, eventually when we leave here, we will... Oh, another visitor. Okay. Who are you? Yeah, who are you? I just moved to Port St. Lucie about three weeks ago. Okay. And actually found your church on Google. Okay. Well, this is your church. Don't go anywhere else. This is your church. <laughs> and I, I, I'll make sure the secretary and the truck forget. Okay. Anyone else? All right. I told you about the coffee hour later. Oh, Lord. Uh, Lenny, God bless his soul. Uh, we miss him already. And we get a chance to give thanks to Almighty God for his life, his friendship, indeed his ministry. Uh, we will be doing that on Saturday, 2 o'clock, here in the church, and uh, then afterwards in the columbarium, and after that, in the parish centre. Uh, I think Lenny was probably here when Paul and I first came, but I'm not sure about that. His, his picture actually wasn't in the book for 2000, uh, but he's certainly uh, been a part of the Holy Faith family for a long time. And of course, his sister and his daughter and his cousin and his cousin and his cousin-in-law, he's been part of our family for a very long time. And we miss him and we give thanks to God for him, and we're going to give him a good farewell on Saturday, 2 o'clock, here in the church. That's Eastern Daylight Time. It is not Jamaica time. All right. Any birthdays to celebrate? Twenty-one. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray you, on your servant, our sister, 
as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. 21. <laughs> Any wedding anniversaries? Anyone going on? You're a rock, aren't you? Where are you off to this time? Connecticut. Connecticut? To see your grannies. Oh, and where are you off to? Jamaica. Jamaica. Okay. You off to? Jamaica. Okay. You going together? Well, go well and come back well. You, you know where you're coming back to? Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's pray. O God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go well. Come back well. Have some good memories. Madam Senior Warden, have I forgotten anything? Yeah. Yesterday was the consecration of the new bishop, Father. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was the consecration of the new bishop, to Bishop Justin. Uh, I, I, I will say that the senior warden and another lady who was with us uh, made themselves known to him and got their pictures with him and I'm sure they will appear in the bulletin sometime in the not too distant future. Anyway, it was a long day. I, Paul and I left here about eight and we got back here about seven. That was a long service. It started at 11, pretty well on time. It finished at what? 2.15? Something like that. 2.15. So, you know. And that, that, that's an Episcopal service. Anybody, anybody else got anything? I've attended many consecrations of bishops in various parts of the world over the many years. I rather think this might be my last. Uh, he's a young man, at least compared with me, and I, I don't expect to be around when his successor is named in somewhere in the 2040s. All right. All right, let's um, process into the world.
Our service here is done. Finished. Kaput. Our fellowship continues in the hall. And from there we will go out into the world in grace and truth and peace and love to serve the Lord and his people wherever they may be. Alleluia! Alleluia! Good to see you. Thank you. Good morning, dear. And you too. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour, another madame.